Hello, we are Group Polytech. My name is June. My name is Dima. My name is Max Antoine. And today we are presenting the process of blown film extrusion. Blown film extrusion is a technology that is the most common method to make plastic films. The process involves extruding a tube of molten polymer through a die and inflating to several times its initial diameter to form a thin film bubble. This bubble is then collapsed and used as a lay flat film or can be made into bags. Usually polyethylene is used for this process and other materials can be used as blends with these polymers. This process starts by feeding plastic material pellets from a hopper into a barrel of the extruder. The material is gradually melted by the mechanical energy generated by turning screws and by heaters arranged along the barrel. The molten polymer is then forced into a die. Air is injected through a hole in the center of the die and the pressure causes the extruded melt to expand into a bubble. The bubble is pulled continually upwards from the die and a cooling ring blows air into the film. The film can also be cooled from the inside using internal bubble cooling. After solidification at the frost line, the film moves into a set of nip rollers, which collapse the bubble and flatten it into two flat film layers. The puller rolls pull the film on the wind-up rollers. The film passes through idler rolls during this process to ensure that there is uniform tension in the film. Between the nip rollers and the wind-up rollers, the film may pass through a treatment center, where the film may be split to form two separate films, or the film can be surface treated if needed. In the cooling step of blown film extrusion, the amorphous, transparent melt crystallizes to form a translucent, hazy film. The point where opacity begins in the bubble is known as the frost line. The frost line height is controlled by several parameters. The airflow, film speed, and temperature difference between the film and the surroundings. Properties of the film such as tensile strength, flexural strength, toughness, and optical properties drastically change depending on the orientation of the molecules. Molecules can be aligned in the machine direction and in transverse direction. As transverse direction properties increase, the longitudinal properties decrease and vice versa. For instance, if all the molecules were aligned in the machine direction, it would be easy to tear the film in that direction and very difficult in the transverse direction. The blown film extrusion is mainly used to produce products for packaging industries. Some examples of products are agricultural films, bags, industry packaging, food drop, laminating film, and many, many others. From literature review, all presenters' go-up strategy for the blown film process are based on the desire to maintain the final film properties persisting at the plant scale. Therefore, influencing parameters need to be systematically adjusted so that the occurring effects during the bubble formation remain constant. In detail, the primary strategy is to keep the bubble's maximum stress in the machine direction and the circumferential direction identical between the lab condition and the industrial condition. To describe it in a formal mathematical scale-up strategy, a geometrical similarity between the two differently scaled processes must be achieved, and the three requirements shown must be met. In detail, the blow-up ratio, BUR, which is the ratio between the bubble diameter and the die diameter, the drawn-down ratio, DDR, which is the ratio between the delivery rate of the melt and the film velocity at the frost line, and the frost line height must be the same in order to scale up. Regarding operation, operating a blow film line is similar to other extrusion process in that the polymer exiting the extruder must have a uniform melt temperature and pressure, while also be at the proper temperature and pressure. While the operation temperature varies with the material, typical operating head pressure for the extruder are in the range of 1,000 to 5,000 PSI. In addition, from literature review, Many researchers also use this process variables such as the die diameter, BUR, DDR, as part of the operating conditions, since the technique of blown film extrusion has been used for large range scales of production. In the field of laboratory research, scientists are also considering the incorporation of blown film technology into large scale manufacturing of carbon nanotubes, and in addition, Many researchers are also developing polymers that are environmentally friendly and biodegradable, but could also handle the blown film extrusion operating conditions. And this will be eventually industrialized in the goal of preserving the environment. While in the field of industry, most of the engineers are focusing on minimizing the production cost and production waste. The polymeric melt can be described as a non-Newtonian fluid which exhibits shear finning behavior, where the viscosity is drastically reduced as the polymer chains orient and disentangle with increasing stress. 
However, the melt is still very viscous, even at high temperature, and therefore the process employs a screw extruder prior to entry into the die. The annulus or lips produce a tube, which is drawn upwards and cooled to below glass transition temperature. The optimal die configuration or flow geometry machined within the feed barrel leads to a more uniform melt, quick and purge time, and product changeover, which leads to an overall improvement to film quality. The process advantages include the ability to modify product width and gauge without major changes to operating equipment, and the added benefit to material properties or improved tensile strength through the applied biaxial stresses which occur in the spooled and transverse direction by blown air. The process disadvantages include the difficulties in controlling the film resulting in over or under inflating the bubble which may lead to potential thin spots within the film. Additionally, the process is prone to flaws, such as wrinkles, which may occur during the bubble collapsing process. As well, the process generally produces a cloudier product due to lower cooling rate when compared to processes which employ chill rollers or quenching. The process may be optimized through automating startup and shutdown to reduce idle time as well as include process control to reduce runaway resin, thin spots and scrap, while increasing net saleable product and process flexibility to meet customer specifications. Internal and external bubble cooling may be employed to encourage crystallization and stabilize internal air temperature. The cooling rate is generally considered the production limiting step. Copolymer extrusion enables the development of advanced polymer film where the various melts are extruded through to the final die with relative thicknesses of material in the film controlled by the speed or volumetric flow rate of such material. The technology may be applied to food wrappers which implement ethylene vinyl alcohol EVA as barrier layer as well as modify film properties to meet desired specifications. In summary, the blown film extrusion process employs thermal plastic characteristics of polymers to produce a uniform layered film for various industrial applications. The process is the most economic method for producing plastic bags in quantity where properties and dimensions can be easily modified with minimal human interactions. However, it is more complex to implement these control schemes when compared to alternative technologies. Recent advances include incorporating multiple layers into films, as well as employing environmentally friendly materials, such as when producing biodegradable bags. Thank you for your attention.